everyone, Janie here, and today I have a tutorial for you on how to make this cute little book. Um, I'm going to be showing you the inside of it here in just a minute, but I am not sure whether to call this a flip book or a mini album or a folio, but it was inspired by a flip book that Jen Evers did a few years ago, and I have kind of taken it and rearranged it and put my own twist on it. So let's head on over to the craft table and I'll show you. So whether you call this a flip book or a mini album or a folio, this is what I made. <laughs> and I thought before we get on to the tutorial that I should show you what it looks like so that you know what the tutorial is about. And I will also be sharing with you the products that I use to make this as well as putting links to them below. So what we have here is a little book and the finished size is four inches by six inches. So it's a nice little size. And I have a ribbon closure on this one, but you do not need to do that. That's kind of optional. You open it up and we have this cute little pocket here where you can put in a picture or you can put in something that you can write on, um, whatever you'd like to use that little pocket for. And then we have a couple of little flip pockets here that hold tags that you can, you know, write things on. You could add small pictures to if you'd like. And then in the back, we have this other pocket right here. Um, perfect for putting all kinds of little goodies in there. You can put in pictures, um, postcards, notes, whatever you want. Um, I have this. You could put in a greeting card. Um, this is not, I actually put this in here as something that pictures could be added to. So, and there's plenty of room for that. And that is what I'm going to be showing you how to make today. Okay, now I'm going to show you the products that I use to make that. And I started off with this Ruby Rose paper pack. It is double-sided paper from Hot Off The Press, which I got from Paper Wishes. And you get 12 sheets, two of each. And let me just flip through here really quick so that you can see these gorgeous papers. And I will show you the ones that I used. But they are all absolutely beautiful. I love them. Okay, I used this one right here with the little Swiss dot design on it. And isn't it just gorgeous? <laughs> and I used this one right here, which you will see both sides of that in my project. I also used, let me get them over here, dazzles, dazzles, and more dazzles. If I can grab them all here. Um a variety. I use the petite stickers. I use the little jewel stickers and border stickers. These are just gorgeous. I love dazzles. Um, I have a drawer full of these. I'm a dazzles addict. Um, these are really great because you can layer them. It's got the flowers and the leaves and you can create these beautiful flowers and I use those as well. And you're going to discover I shop at Paper Wishes a lot <laughs> because I have more Paper Wishes products here, more hot off the press. We've got these tin tags and trims, which come with a variety of tags in here. They're falling all over, but a variety of tags and little elements and the matching stamp set. So this is awesome. This is one of my favorite things that I use a lot, and so is this one right here. So this is the nine tiny tags and little labels and the matching stamps for that also. And you just get so many different, you know, sizes and shapes. I love these. Absolute favorites. I also used my Distress Oxide ink in worn lipstick. And... I use these little pale pink pearls that probably came from Michael's at other dollar fifty bin. I don't know. I've had them for so long. And I used my Martha Stewart lace punch set. So it has the corners and the edges so you can punch around a page. 
So I think that about takes care of it. I hope I haven't forgotten anything. Okay, so you are going to need one sheet of 12 by 12 double-sided paper. And to make things go quicker, I've already cut this in half. So you will end up with six by 12 and you will need both pieces. And the next thing we're going to do is score this. So let me grab my scoreboard. Now we're going to score each one at four inches and eight inches. We're gonna do the same thing on both. So four inches and eight inches. Next, you're gonna have to decide what pattern you want on the outside of your flip book. And I want this floral print on the outside. So I'm gonna flip this over. I'm gonna flip them both over and we are going to fold on one of those score lines. So there's one. We're gonna do the same thing on this one. All right, so this is what we want on the outside and these two are going to be adhered together right like that. So the way we're gonna do that is let me grab my little double-sided tape here. This is really easy. Just take your double-sided tape and put it as close to the edge as you can get. And if you want, you know, extra, extra strength, you can do the same thing on this side. So just for right now, just for this, that's what I'm going to show you. Now you're going to grab your ruler and you are going to put a mark because no one's going to see this. You're going to put a mark right here at the three inch mark. I can barely see that, but you'll be able to see it. And three inches is the center because this is six inches. So three inches is the middle. We're going to do the same thing on this end. So put a little mark right here at three inches. And then either take some half inch double sided tape. Um, for the sides, we used quarter inch. And you can still use quarter inch and just use two strips, one on each side of that mark that you made, but having them like attached, or you can do it with half inch. And I'm gonna use the half inch. And so I just find my little mark right there and kind of center this over it. And that way we're putting this up the center. Okay, and let me tear this off. Okay, so it looks like that. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing on this one now. Okay, now I'm going to remove all of the adhesive and I'm gonna show you ahead of time. We're going to line these two up and we're gonna flip one over right on top of the other one. So, I'm gonna speed things up and you can watch this. All right, so line them up so that they are even. And very carefully Fold one over on top of the other, just like that. And you now have this flippy piece in the middle. All right, now for the next step. You're going to be cutting the flappy part right here in half, right down the middle, because we're gonna be creating two pockets. But to make it easier to cut, I'm actually going to score it at three inches because it's six inches here. So right in the middle is at three inches. And I'm gonna score that right to the first score line that goes 
this direction. Okay, so right to right to the score line. So just score it at three inches. It'll be right down the middle and it makes it so much easier to cut. And I've cut it and now we have our little flaps for our pockets here. And we're gonna be punching little half circles right here. But before we get to that, we're going to go to the back here. So I want you to fold on that score line, folding it in. You can do the same thing on the front now. Fold. We are not done yet, but I'm just going to show you that there is the cover. You open it up. We have the little flaps and back here. This is where we're going to go next. So make sure you know where the back of your little flip book is. Again, you're going to need a ruler. And this time you are going to measure up one and a half inches. So one and a half and put a little mark right there. The next thing you're going to do is if you have a cutter, great. If you don't, I will show you that just line up your little mark and the little fold line right here. So we're going to go to this fold line right there. Okay. And you can either do that with a ruler and draw a line there, or if you do it just right, you can fold this up and create a crease. But if you have a paper trimmer, what you're going to do is line up that corner and your little mark right over here. Now, because it's hard for me to see where this crease is when I'm putting it in there, I have a tiny piece of washi tape here and I'm going to attach it right there. That way I know that's where the fold is. And I'm gonna slide that right in there, line that up, line up my little pencil mark right here. See if I could lift this up because I cannot bring my camera down. Can't zoom in. But there's the little pencil mark. And you just want to line it up right with where the cutting edge is going to be. And by doing that, we are going to I get it lined up just right here. There we go. We just cut off that little angle. Let me peel the washi tape right off here. Move that out of the way. And what we've created here is a little pocket. So the next thing is some more of that uh, double-sided tape. It comes in real handy. <laughs> and we are going to use the quarter inch again and put it right along the bottom. And right along this little tiny edge right here. Okay, and now we'll just peel that off and peel that off. Fold it over and now we have a little pocket here in the back. Now we're going to go to the front. So this folds in. And before we seal it, we're going to flip this out. Make sure that this is the top of your book up here, okay? And you are going to measure two inches because each panel is four inches and the middle of that would be two inches. So I'm gonna put a little mark right there. And then from there, we're going to measure down two inches. So remember, we measured two inches this way, and now we're going to measure two inches this way. So we'll find our little thing and just make a pencil line all the way down to the two inches. You don't have to do it dark, just enough for you to see. Take your scissors and cut right along that line. All right, now we're going to flip it over and you are going to fold back the corners. 
so. Kind of like a shirt collar. And this is easier to do if I'm in a different position, but this works. So there's one, and folding this one over, and two. Actually, that can fold down just a tad bit more. Okay, and so now you have created these little, little collar. And later you can either glue these down with little glue dots and add some little gems right there, or if you wanted to use brads, this is the time to do that. Before we adhere this down, you would need to poke your little holes and put your brads through if that's what you're going to use. Um, on this one, I am not, so I am ready for my double-sided tape. We're going to put the double-sided tape from this score line out to this edge and along this edge. And now we have created a little pocket right here. Now we're going to make the notches in the little pockets here. And you can use any type of punch you want. Um, I have these circles and I'm gonna be using this one because this is the size I want. And you just put it in and center it the best you can. As you can see, I'm not going all the way down. You just kinda of wanna make it a half punch there. So there's one. And we're going to do the same thing right here. Center it on the pocket and make sure I've got it centered good. And there we go. So we have our little pockets for our tags. And there we go. It's hard the first time you open these. So we have little pockets for tags or gift cards, whatever it is that you're going to put in there. And the next thing we're going to do is we are going to put a little spine on the outside. For the binding, you are going to need a piece of cardstock or a piece of, um, you know, double-sided paper, whatever it is you want to use. And it needs to be six inches by two and one eighth. Okay. And I am using just a solid piece of cardstock because eventually it's going to be covered up mostly. <laughs> so what you're gonna do is you're going to score it at one inch, and then you are going to turn it like this, and you are going to score it at one inch again. This is the easiest way to score it because at one eighth of an inch, is going to be a little awkward if you do it another way. So it now has two little score lines and you are going to fold on those score lines and create the binding. This is difficult to do when they're so close together. But there we go. And now you can either use decorative scissors to cut along the edges if you want it to be decorative, or you can even use a punch. And I'm going to be using this Martha Stewart um, lace punch. So I'll be right back. Okay, I have the edges punched and it is going to fit right on the edge just like that. But I think I want to attach a ribbon. So I'm gonna show you how to attach a ribbon before attaching the binding, just in case you want to do the same thing. Okay, the first thing I've done is I've already wrapped a ribbon around it and tied it so that I know I have the length that I want. And I'm just gonna push this up a little bit and I'm gonna grab some double-sided tape. I am using the half inch. And I'm gonna put this right around 
approximately the middle where I'm going to want the ribbon to be. And we will just peel that off. And then we're going to move the ribbon right down over that. So just make sure you get your ribbon right where you want it. There we go. So I have that stuck on there. And now, while we have that double-sided tape out and ready to go, we're gonna put this on the inside. Now, I'm gonna get this up close here. You don't want it to overlap any of the score lines. So on this side, you want it to be just this side of that score line, and the same thing on the other side, leaving that eighth inch in the middle without any tape. Okay, so. We're just going to tear the tape off from one side to start with. Okay, so tape is just off the one side. You're going to take this, and actually I'm going to flip it over. That way it's not sticking right here on the side. And you're going to line it up so that it is exactly where it's supposed to be. And fold it over. Okay, and now the other side should be perfect without anything to worry about. So we'll just peel that off and fold that over. And there you go. But I'm gonna do a little bit more to this and you're going to see that in the end, but I just wanted to show you what it looks like before we start decorating it. Okay, I'll be back when it's decorated. I normally don't show me decorating. I usually do that off camera. And while I was putting on these beautiful border dazzles, I thought, you know what? I need to get up close here and show you guys how easy it is to use them. So this is what I'm using. Um, they're out of the package right now but they are border dazzles and they are wonderful. These are very delicate, but yet sturdy. I don't know exactly how to explain that. So I'm gonna try to pull one off here and show you. Okay. All right, move that out of the way. Very intricate and very, as you can see, very, they look flimsy, <laughs> but they're not. And so I just wanted to show you how easy these are to put on. And as you can see, they're very easy to work with and they are gorgeous. Okay, let me turn that one off where my sisters go. Okay. Just see how easy that went on. Hopefully my hands and everything weren't necessarily in the way too much. Okay. Put that out of the way. They go on that easy and they are on to stay. Let me trim this one off. and they just make things beautiful. Okay, I'm gonna finish decorating. Oops, that's upside down. <laughs> Anyways, I am gonna finish decorating and I'll be right back. Okay, in case you're interested, I'm going to walk you through how I decorated my little album here. And I know you have ideas of your own on how you're gonna to wanna to decorate it. But what I did was I glued some pink lace trim to the binding along with some ribbon and a bow. And I already showed you how I attached this ribbon, which is optional. And then 
This label right here is from Nine Tiny Tags and Little Labels. And I don't know if you can see that, but I use the um, Distress Oxide ink to stamp um, the back label, which is from the matching stamps for that set. And this cute little butterfly also came from that set. And I just added a little pearl there in the middle. And, oh, I almost forgot. That little um, sentiment right there also came from that stamp set. So those are both from the nine tiny tags and little labels, stamps, and dies. And... Then inside, I used some um, dazzles right here. These are their little um, little gem dazzles. And I use those because I'm trying to keep the decorations as flat as possible in here so it doesn't get too bulky. And I put a little bow right there. And this was done with my Martha Stewart um, lace punch set that I showed you. And then over here, these are those layered flowers that I showed you that set with the flowers and the leaves. And so those are from those dazzles. And these are from the dazzle borders. And so I put those on the pockets front and back. Those are also little dazzles off from one of the other sets. Um, let me take a quick look here and see if I can grab that. That was off from the um, petite stickers. And the tags that I have in here, I'll pull it actually all the way out so you can see it better. These were cut with the 10 tags and trims stamp and die set. And that was a stamp from the set. And I used the um, Distress Oxide ink for that. And then I just put another piece on this side so that something can be written or stamped on there. So that is how um, both of the tags are the same. And then over here I did more of the pink lace trim and the ribbon and this little butterfly down here same as the one on the front so that came from the nine tiny tags and little label set with a little pearl in it. And this is more of the paper from the set. Um, the same um, Ruby Rose set that the rest of this paper came from. And that dazzle right there is also from the Petite stickers. And that is where that one that says Moments, which I can't get it focused good, but that all came from that set. And I think that pretty much covers everything I did to decorate mine. Thank you for watching and I hope that tutorial was easy to follow and not too long. And below in the description box where it says show more, just click on that and it'll drop down and you will find all of the links to the products that I used today as well as links to Crafter's Castle because we have challenges every month and I would love to see your beautiful creations in it because it is an anything goes. So happy crafting everyone and bye-bye.